I uh, probably didn't do a trail log for yesterday. Hmm. Straight out of the ground, I guess. Probably because, I don't know why, but suddenly trail logs don't matter. Um, I don't know when it started. It's like the mileage, I don't care. The, uh, getting from point A to point B no longer seems to matter. Ah, oh, that's kind of the release I've been wanting. Uh, today though, my mind is on rock climbing. I have created route after route after route of climbing routes in my head all morning and uh, it's been very tempting I know that these are all probably virgin climbing spots I mean, look at that unfortunately I don't have the uh, necessary gear so that's been the struggle I want to climb but I can't <laughs> Which is kind of funny because lately, since I had the back surgery, I guess, so a couple years, I haven't wanted to climb. Oh my. It's like every single place just sticks out as a route. Like from that red dot on the tree, start there, and just follow that up. Uh, fuck my life, I'm out here hiking. Get rock climbing out of your head. Oh, today's been all about wanting to rock climb. I'm dying for a cigarette, I don't understand why. Uh, I'm rambling, so let me go ahead and shut this off. Hopefully you've seen enough. This landscape along the Cumberland River over there. Uh, I can see the river. I'm just a couple miles short of Cumberland Falls headed north I uh, left something out so last night camping along the uh, Cumberland River and I don't know around 2.30 or so I woke up and I, I thought I heard something walking in the woods and uh, then just like out of nowhere this wolf starts calling and I know that's what I heard walking <laughs> and then there was like a pause and off in a the distance there was another one I was like you know you you hear a wolf on TV howling and uh, it sounds a lot different on TV than what it does in person like it literally had the hair on the back of my neck standing up like I felt like a fucking dog And uh, I just kept reassuring myself that you know you're the you're the uh, top dog here. Don't be worrying about no wild wolves trying to come in, steal your food, attack you while you're asleep in your hammock. Like it really messed with my head quite a bit. And uh, they're kind of popular up the Red River Gorge too. And I've, I've actually had them walk through camp when I was winter camping and saw their tracks in the snow after laying there listening to them howl all night. I'm in a kind of a technical part, so I gotta shut this off.
still next to the Cumberland, getting close to Cumberland Falls. You can tell I'm getting closer to civilization. Civilization is noisy. Everything that I come out to the woods to get away from, I'm walking into. Uh, something else I kind of noticed, this is interesting, and I realized it only a couple days in, but I haven't discussed it yet, is uh, I have a uh, droid uh, turbo, and it gets about three days battery usage and battery save and airplane mode. And I was like, oh, that's great. I can shut it off and probably get five days or six days out of it, or maybe unlimited. But what I found out is, it actually uses the same amount of power when it's turned off as it does with both battery save and airplane mode on at the same time. And I got to thinking about that, like, why would that be? I mean, there's got to be a little bit of, oh, that's kind of cool. There's got to be a little bit of power that's used to keep the uh, read-only memory and the bootloader. Uh, let me rephrase that. There's got to be a little bit of power to keep the uh, read-only memory active, which initializes the bootloader and starts up the phone. But that seems like an awful lot of power for that, so I got to thinking about it even more. And I almost bet anything, location services are still on when the phone is shut off. So, if I ever decide to become a bank robber, or I decide to kill somebody, or I decide to become a criminal, I need to go one step farther than just shutting my phone off so location services aren't able to find me. I also need to just leave the damn phone somewhere I'm not. So, for what it's worth, a little piece of information that <laughs> some of the things you think about when you're on the trail. I want to go ahead and take it, shut this off so I can take a picture and hike up all these steps. There's a lot of them. It looks like it goes about halfway to the moon or so. All right, so I've mentioned this a couple of times. The correct way to use trekking poles, some people call them hiking poles, is, uh, let me try to demonstrate. You'll notice that the trekking poles are rearward of me. So they go behind the center point of my legs. And uh, let me see if I can get this on camera. And hopefully that showed up.
You know, it's pretty sad. I live in Kentucky, and this is the first time I've ever been to Cumberland Falls. They have it decorated for fall weather.
man, I was just trucking along. Popped up onto this hill. Rattlesnake was right there in the trail. If I would have taken one more step. Oh, he slithered off over there into them roots. So now, got me on edge. I got to get on down away from here. He went in there somewhere. Man. Oh, so the first rattlesnake I've seen on the trail, I saw one copperhead mm, four or five days ago. And then I saw one baby snake. I actually think it was a copperhead too. It was kind of hard to tell because it was so small. And I was really kind of surprised I haven't seen more snakes. Um, wow. Right on the trail, like I said, I was, uh, now I'm all paranoid about taking steps. Wow. <sighs> Wouldn't that be a piss or get bit by a snake? Anyways, shut this off, get back to hiking, getting them miles in. Inside of the shelter, I think there's a bucket there to do your thing. Um, someone's left some cordage. There's a inflatable mattress, some foods over there, uh, a thermo rest, um, a map, a pot, a broom, a walking stick. The fire pit. I uh, stopped here just to rest. It's two miles to the next shelter. There's only three shelters on this whole trail, and two of them are just two miles apart. So I'm going to go to it. I need to get water between now and then. And I'm going to time myself. It is right now uh, 3.38, and I plan on leaving at 3.45 p.m. So I run out of water back at the other first shelter. I'm kind of in between the two. And uh, I've seen this place that comes down to the river. You can kind of see the ground here. Uh, and then looking down there, the parts that look wet is like quicksand. So I had to walk from... You might be able to see my footprints right there. I had to walk from there all the way down to the other end checking to see if it was safe to walk on and I finally found a place that I could stand on for a second or so and my feet only sunk about an inch so it was all the way down there you can't even really see where it's at and where it kind of curves in toward that those two rocks down there, the first two rocks. Anyways, I took the cap off my smart water bottle, started to fill it, and immediately sunk nearly to my knees. <laughs> you talk about scaring the fuck out of you. I thought I was going to sink all the way to China. I know you probably can't see it, but look at all of these mushrooms. 
there are hundreds in just this little section like everywhere you look I believe that they're poisonous. I would have to look these up. They're one I'm not familiar with either way. So I made it to a Bark Camp Shelter. I did not do very good on trail miles today. I got here, collected some uh, firewood, got me a fire started. Uh, I actually found a couple of eye bolts to hang my uh, hammock on. So glad somebody put one of those, those in there because normally in most shelters I would hang a strap on these uh, headers right there on the walls and then go over to the other wall and hang a another strap on a header but neither one uh, has an air gap so you can't do it that way so thankfully someone thought about that it looks like there's another hook down there so two people could do hammocks in here um, I am beat I had a whole lot of what the fucks on the trail today um, GPS miles for the day 1491 which means that actual trail miles was probably uh, let me get out a map and check um, horrible whatever let's see I know about where I was camped at last night Let's, let's just say I was about two miles from the Cumberland Falls, so we'll go with trail mile 60, and now I'm at trail mile 69 and a half. So maybe nine and a half trail miles. Um, the problems that I had, a lot of the places between the two shelters are so overgrown with Fall foliage, I guess. I mean, I'm sure it ain't that way in the spring or summer, but fall, horrible. Eye level, thorns, so you got to keep those out of your face. Um, water shortages everywhere. Um, then when I did find water, I already talked about, I sunk up to my knees in mud. Uh, the official through hiker guidebook says to go left at the sign which is going down a hill to um, to uh, Devil Creek and then it basically says uh, nothing. The next entry in the official through hiker guide is first entrance to Bark Camp Shelter. The problem with that is if you look at the trail notes, it says to be careful crossing the rocks. Except for Devil's Creek is dry and you can't get on the damn rocks. Or at least the rocks that I saw anywhere close to the trail that goes down at the sign. So then I walked back up to the sign and went up and you could cross a creek there. But then once you cross the creek there, there's I couldn't figure out a way to get back down to the trail. Um, so I finally just said fuck it and uh, walked across the mud taking a risk of sinking again like I did earlier in the day um, but I didn't so uh, yeah it took me uh, actually I, I said in a previous video it was 345 and I just got to the second and it's 640 345 445 545 nearly three hours to go two miles what do you think about that shit? So, uh, I'm beat. I'm tired. I got dehydrated earlier, even though I did finally get water at Devil's Creek. Um, so, I'm going to rest up here, call it a night early, 
and uh, rehydrate myself. I'll check in tomorrow.